The following program is funded by grants from Nebraskans for Public Television, the Nebraska Arts Council, and the Lincoln Jazz Society. Long and dreary, and the sun refused to shine. I'd never be blowing lonely if I knew that you were mine. Well, baby, why don't you make everything all right? Now, will it be today, baby, or will it be tomorrow night? This is my confession, mama, and I'm thrilled for all your charms. I'm in heaven when you hold me in your arm, well, baby, and I have you for myself. Turn that book that way or what? Turn it this way? Or oh, like this? Now, when this picture was taken, this had to be during the Dave Dexter day, you see. So that was right around uh, 1938. And that was our first trip to uh, Savoy Ballroom in New York. Lucky he know us on guitar. Gene Ramey on bass. Gus Johnson on drums. Bob maybe in tenor sax, Les Bird on alto, John Jackson on alto, Freddie Culliver on tenor. Now you notice there was only four saxophones. Well, uh, later on after we got to make a little bit more money, then we were able to add the bad sax. <laughs> that time we had just used the four. <laughs> Our first record was made in Dallas. Dave told us, he says, uh, what I'm working on, he says, I want something that we can sell. He says, uh, we've lost about two hours and a half. He says, uh, I can't sell it. He says, do y'all know any blues? Yeah. So we played blues down. Do you know any boogie boogie? Yeah, we played a boogie boogie down. He said it. So he told us, he says, well, I'll tell you, he said, do another blues. He said, I'll take one of those other tunes. That little earful was knocked out like the sole of a whip spud. And our men, we call on McChan with the Jay Fronis piece for a little chopper banging about the winder upper. Go ahead, Jay. The boys and I want to do one of our favorite tunes for you. It's called Jump the Blues. We had a big laugh. We were in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Because I had a big band then. We found out we knew we were supposed to start playing about 9 o'clock. So about, oh, I guess about 8.30, we all started showing up there at this club. So he thought, by the name being McShen, he was getting the white bands. <laughs> so we got there that night. And uh, uh, I came up there, the bandstand. He says, uh, when is the ba band going to show? He said, well, the band's here. Most of the guys are here, just one or two. And he said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, it's been a mistake. So uh, 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 he ran up to the office there, and he called uh, called this guy that was booking us. Told him, says, "Hey, what, uh, what what's happening here?" Says, "You may you must have made some kind of mistake." <laughs> the guy says, "No, what?" He says, "Well, there's a band here." He says, "He says they got a uh, colored band here." He says, "He says I thought I was buying a white band." <laughs> so the guy said, "No, says Max, yeah, that's a colored band." <laughs> I 
sometimes all we did as many as 91 nighters in a row. And 91 nighters is, is me, you know. <laughs> During that time, we, the cat was all young. They could take it, you know. It didn't make no difference, you know. It was just, you know, they got, got two up tonight. It didn't mean a thing. The next morning, they strong, back and ready to go again. <laughs> yeah. Everybody there, there's one thing about those guys, everybody didn't try to play like Mary. They enjoyed Mary, they loved Mary, but most of those guys were as stylish as well in themselves. That was Piggy Minor, he was a, uh, you know, brass man, but he was, he was quite a stylist. But later his uh, teeth got bad and that shut him off. And Bernard Anderson, he uh, had uh, what they call TB, you know. So the doctor stopped him from playing the brass and the trumpet, you know. Muskogee, Oklahoma. This is January the 12th, 1916. It was four kids in the family, three girls and one boy. <laughs> and I'm the boy. <laughs> I can remember way back, I don't know, I guess it must have been about, uh, oh, maybe four or five years old, you know. Well, old man, he was just trying to fool around on the piano, you know. And the same thing like with my mother, but they never did, you know, he only had one tune that he knew, and he taught me that tune once. And it's just a little old, an old jazz thing, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sometimes the bands would come over to school and two or three numbers for a, we'd call it assembly, you know. My folks, they were pretty Christian-like. They didn't, couldn't see, didn't like that of me wanting to go to dances and things like that. So if I went, I'd have to, you know, do it in another manner, you know, like sneak off or something, you know. <laughs> I found a little cupid 
first came to Kansas City, see, I didn't have any bread. You know, you know, I guess I probably had about 60, 70 cents on me. <laughs> but I ran into uh, one of the guys that I knew from Tulsa, see. He was playing bass with Bus Moton's band. And he's the one that gave me the idea to stay in Kansas City. He said, man, he says, this is where you want to stay. He says, uh, uh, this is where the music is. You don't want to be going to Omaha. He said, come on here, you know. They didn't have a piano player. Uh, so I heard the guys talking. Well, man, I don't know what we're going to do for a piano player. So I sat and listened to them rehearse. And after they got to rehearse, and then I told one of the guys, I said, well, listen, y'all still need a piano player. I said, I think I can make it. I said, well, I said, I think I can play this stuff. He said, well, why do you say something, man? You've been sitting down there. Why do you say something? Come on up. Well, you know, I couldn't read it. Know the music, you know. They put all this big orchestration out in front of me, you know. <laughs> but I had heard him rehearsing, so I just went ahead on and played all along with him. He says, "Man, we got a piano player can read and fake." <laughs> but I couldn't read a note. Yeah, they thought I was reading, but I was just faking. <laughs> I kept for the waiting for the guys to start off. I said, "Come on, when, when you guys was," they said, "You got it." I said, "What?" You got it. See, there it is. You got the first first four bars. Piano solo. <laughs> stand in Kansas City, and uh, that's why they picked me up on this one night in Kansas City. We were taking a break, doing intermission, so these two guys come over, they told me, he says, this we've got to talk to you, he says, it's very important. I said, we hate to do this, but we've got to take you to Leavenworth right now. I said, Leavenworth? I said, well, what's happening in Leavenworth? <laughs> he says, uh, <laughs> they've got you up for immediate induction, he says, hey, they haven't been able to find you, or, so they've been sending you papers all over the country and says, we've got to take you right now. <laughs> when I walked inside the gates, uh, I was in. <laughs> Louder. 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 Play that thing. Louder. Louder. Oh, I was in the service about two, 13 months. Well, that broke the band up, you know, right there. I uh, didn't realize that uh, that the big bands was over with then, just in that short length of time, see, because uh, uh, they had started these small combos. And then most of the dance halls were being converted into bowling alleys. And uh, so I came out, and uh, so um, I uh, went back to New York. In fact, organized in New York, in New York City. And uh, so the uh, guys that was doing the booking told me, they said, well, they said, we know you like the big band sound. They said, but I'll tell you what, they said, you might as well forget about it for the time being. They said, because everything is going to be combo. He said, that's it. I'm going to make a right turn here. Now, this John here on to this corner up here on the left. That used to be called be the old Kentuck Club. See, that's a Dixie barbecue right there on the left. That used to be a nightclub.
enjoy those spook breakfasts. It was a funny sight to see people who would be on their way to work, sitting out waiting for the streetcar, and they step inside and start listening to the music and the stuff, and they put the dinner bucket down and don't go to work. Stay there and ball. <laughs> I played at. It's right on this corner down here. Now that was called Wolf's Buffet. You see where that says Delicatessen? That was a club right on that corner there called Wolf's Buffet, right there, with all that red paint. Oh, see, this is 18th and Vine, yeah. You heard him talking about 18th and Vine. This is it. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sunday morning. He's from Oklahoma. <laughs> John said, <laughs> now he's busy. Now, he's, uh, now you played, who'd you play with, John? Oh, I played with a whole lot of them. He played with a whole bunch of the bands. Now, you could, uh, look here, we'll get out and come on in. Okay, Hudson. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. You know when we was eating like dogs, he was Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, man. Oh, this is good. Now, he's the original scamp. The original Kansas City Scamps, yeah, that, that is him. Well, look, well, look, 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 wait a minute, you wired up here, man. You hooked up here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in here, you old fire. Yeah. Yeah. All the way around over here. Hey! Bam! Bang! Bang! <laughs> What's going on? Both of these guys are very talented musicians. And uh, Bone plays guitar, trombone, bass, and piano, what not else. And, uh, uh, you know, he used to come out and sit in with the cats, and, you know, bar tea. And he worked with the band. He went on the road with me, you know. Yeah. He, when was that? That was 55, wasn't it? 56. Yeah, you got a good memory. Prof, now he's got the big band. That's Willie Rice. We call him Prof. You know, Prof has been Prof here for uh, many years. Oh, and uh, <laughs> Prof keeps the, takes care of the big band for me and right. for everything else that comes along. That's right. Yeah. Now, that gentleman over there is Fats Dennis. Now, that's uh, Mr. Fats. <laughs> he uh, used to be fat. That's when he was little. <laughs> 
You take right now, fast piggy miner, uh, Al Barty, Brown over there, Arthur Mitchell, they can get together and do the same thing right now without a reversal. So this is unusual. You can only do this in Kansas City. Kansas City music is the only one can do this type of thing. Right. Get together. Well, the chain of hotels all over the country, Breckenridge, right here in Kansas City, they'll go, they'll get, they had Vic Damon in here, Jack Jones, Mills Brothers, Nancy Wilson, all named entertainers. Oh, yeah. and, and they fell on their face. But they'll come right to a local entertainer don't pay and don't want to pay him anything. So you <laughs> don't want to pay him anything. Don't want to pay him anything. And, just and, he, and he can make more money for them than the, than the name entertainer. And this goes on all the time. It might go on in your city. I don't know. But it goes on all the time. A local entertainer, I don't care how great he is, he's got to get away from home to make it. And if he gets away from home, he can come back in and he can clean up. He can make some money. That's going on too. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny thing. It happens all over. I guess guys in New York experience the same thing. They've got to get away from, they get away from home to make any money. Yeah. Yeah. Your Packer test is covered by Jubilee, direct from Hot Horn Hall under the solid gas veracity of the Armed Forces Radio Service.
This program was funded by grants from Nebraskans for Public Television, the Nebraska Arts Council, and the Lincoln Jazz Society.